All right, hello everyone, Adrenaluke here, coming at you with another episode of Dirty Driving, and this one is a banger. You guys are going to love what you're going to see here. So the main culprit of this video is who I'm focused on right here, Jump Like Jaw, which is kind of a strange username, but here's what's going on with him. This guy right here, he's watched way too many Fast and Furious movies, and he he's re must really love Tokyo Drift the most. And he's seen that movie where he sees that when they take the turns, he sees that when they drift, they go around the turns a lot faster, right? So he thinks, oh, in the movie, they drift, they go faster around the turns. So this, we're diving deep into the psychology of an idiot here, guys. We're going to see a common trend with this guy throughout the whole race to where he goes drift, 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 drift around almost every corner of the track. And he must think he's doing it intentionally in a freaking race because he thinks that it's making him go faster. So I just think it's interesting to just like ponder why he even thinks that maybe he plays too much Mario Kart because I know in Mario Kart you drift, you go faster. So he either is an avid Mario Kart player or he's really loving the movie Tokyo Drift and thinks that that transfers to real racing. But either way, that's the main culprit of this video. But before we get to that, I just want to point out two things that will give you just a little bit of a laugh before we get started. So the first thing I want to point out, I am the only one in manual here. Come on, guys. Like... You see the MT on my HUD down there, on the right of what gear I'm in. MT means manual transmission, and when we go down, everyone else says AT. Look at this. Automatic, 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 automatic. Come on, guys. There's got to be at least one other guy in manual. But the second thing I wanted to point out, which is actually a little more funny, look at what gear D Mills is in right before they're counting down the start of the race. I don't think he realized that he was in reverse. And that's the price you pay for being an automatic. You don't pay much attention to what gear you're in. So that was just a little bit funny how he started off the race in reverse. Now, one more thing that I'll point out before we get to the main culprit is that my start of the race should have been pretty good because I had pole position. So I should have been leading the race right off the bat. However, it didn't quite work out that way. Now, it wasn't a terrible start, but I had pole position. I'm leading up into turn number one here. Jump like Jaw is going to go at a big lunge here and towards the inside, so I can't claim the inside. Petrol Head, which you didn't quite see there, gave me a bump, so I'm going to just go back a little bit so you can see Petrol Head. Gives me a little bit of a bump, but nothing too crazy. This, you know, it happens. It's, I wasn't really irritated at all there. I'm like, uh, whatever. It's just a little bit of a rough start. I just wanted to point that out real quick. Now, let's get into dirty driving, all right, guys? Let's get into this video. Let's start this episode. So... Notice what Jump Like Jaw is going to do up here. He's going to go for his first drift of the race. And it makes me slow down tremendously. But in his mind, he thinks, hey, you guys can't catch me. I'm just going to drift around these corners. Who cares about, you know, slowing down, taking a geometrical line through it, and, you know, having throttle control, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to slide and slide through all these corners because, you know, that's what, that's what makes me fast. See that? He's going to slide again, just keep drifting. And the fact that he had to drift there on that last corner watch this so when he drifts it forces me to slow down which makes petrol head have no choice but to hit me it's a chain reaction and so this is very problematic jump like jaw is being a hazard to the race and so i'm really not liking this guy to begin with okay so that wasn't really a good first lap and he's building a gap between me and him just because he's drifting so often so let's let's show into lap number two now there's uh, the third time in the race that he's going to be drifting. And it's in this corner again. Here he goes, doing his trademark drifting. And so it's going to cause me to catch right up. And I don't think he realizes that that's making him go a lot slower. So then let's skip into lap three now. He's drifting again. Just a, just a baby drift there. Just a baby drift. But I'm still catching up. And then I believe he does it again in the next corner. Let's see. I, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but I'm pretty sure. Okay, he doesn't drift there, but he goes wide. Now, I do know that leading up into this corner in lap three right here that I skipped to, he is going to drift again. And by this point, I'm getting impatient. 
And so, okay, let me slow down a bit because this is a major plot point here and the battle that we have is that I was getting impatient and I just went backwards to let you guys know if you didn't catch that. So I just wanted to, to explain a little bit more what, what was going on here is I was getting really impatient that he was drifting and s forcing me basically to slow down and give him space and then I get back up to a somewhat respectable speed just you know letting someone this slow be in front of me and I just having to slow down so much to avoid rear-ending him every single corner I was getting tired of it and so I predicted that he was going to drift again here I predicted it so I, I purposely went early on into the inside and I give him just the ever so slightest bump there did you see that it was just a little tiny baby bump now he is angry at me and he can't take that I gave him a little bit of a baby bump while he slows way down to do his Tokyo drift over there so what does he do well leading up into the next lap the very next chance he gets he says oh you want to bump me okay well I'll just do the huge dive bomb lunge right into here and look at this look at this he keeps pushing me pushing me pushing me still trying to push me still trying to do a pit maneuver on me we're still off the track and he still keeps doing it now I'm going to go back and show you guys that again, but this time, so you know what happens, but I want you this time, now that you've seen what happens with the cars, pay attention on the bottom of the screen. So this bar on the left of the RPM gauge, the left of it shows his brake pedal. If he's, a pro if he's applying his brakes, it'll show up in a white bar like what you see on the right there. That bar to the right is his throttle. See how the throttle bar is full in, in a white bar. That shows that he's fully engaging his throttle. Now I want you to see, when he's coming up here, notice that he's, he's not braking when he's making contact with me. No brakes, but continues to push me with throttle. No brakes still, no brakes still, still no brakes, still no brakes. And he's still, the whole time, he was trying and making a huge effort to push me off, but he doesn't know that I actually know how to control my car, and I'm like, no, 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 that's not going to work on me. So this whole time, I was counter-steering to full lock on the left. It took me to counter steer full lock to the left, to me to fully engage my brakes for him to not push me off, and that causes petrol head again to hit me, so this guy is a huge hazard. So, I'll show you this one more time. We'll watch this one more time from this view again. Just to show how dirty he is, that one tap caused him to do this and make a huge effort, huge effort to try to ruin my race. Really, dude? Like, are you kidding me? You have to drift around every corner, and you're like, I'm going to drift around every corner, and you just have to stay behind me, because you have to brake and just give me the room, and if you even nudge my car, it's like, dude, you were, okay, let's show what pissed him off again here. So, from my perspective, look at how slow he was going. I had every right to squeeze in there. I was done. Letting you go super slow and slowing me down. I was going way faster than you through that corner and like, I don't know, five other corners that you drifted on? Like, let me go in front of you, man. Like, this is just ridiculous. He just saw me just barely nudge his car and he thought, okay, that's it, I've had it with you. You didn't let me do my drifty drifts. Well, then I'm gonna Tokyo drift you off the track. <laughs> he just goes for this huge lunge here and then pushes the corner of my car and tries, like he wasn't braking the whole time. There's no way that he wasn't noticing through that that he wasn't making contact with me. There's just no, is there any question in that? Like let's count how many seconds he was engaged in pushing my car there, all right guys? Let's count this. Ready? And one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine Mississippi, almost ten full seconds. Nine full seconds of trying to push me off. And nowhere, nowhere in those nine seconds did he even touch the brakes and try to back off. This guy had no intention of trying to avoid that. That was 100% intentional, just in case anyone still had any doubt there. And so I just wanted to expose the heck out of this guy because that's just that's just so over the top, man. That's just so over the top. You're going to drift. You're going to drift in a race five times in front of me, or maybe it was four times, I don't know, but four to five times of drifting in front of me. Why, dude?
and you're going so slow that it was it was well within reasonable for me to just pass you on that last drift there and just barely nudge your car. Like, come on, man. You can't even handle that. And because of that, you're just going to try to just nine full seconds of pushing my car. Didn't work for you, buddy, did it? But, you know, maybe if somebody else that wasn't an A-class driver and has the skills to countersteer like I do, if you tried that on them, yeah, maybe you'd be able to ruin their race after they barely bump you after, you know, doing your little Tokyo Tokyo e-brake drifts around the track or thinking this Mario Kart to drift. Like, dude, you're going like three times slower than you could be when you do that. So if you're watching this video, take my advice and don't drift around the corners, man. Just stop, all right? So that's it for the video, guys. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe because I have a lot of new content coming. If you enjoyed this video, please click like, race fast, race clean, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Okay, now I know I already said the outro and that was supposed to be the closure of this video, but to quote Billy Mays here, but wait, there's more! And so, I ended up getting paired with this same guy, Jump Like Jaw, and the next race I did actually, I saw his username again, but these were two days apart, so after I had that race that I uploaded before this clip, I went to bed and then this clip here was the next day after. Now, I'm going to upload them in the same video, though, but I just wanted to show you things weren't over yet with this guy. Now, I do want to say I was impressed with him this time up to the point where things got out of hand. And so, leading up to a certain point, this was a very good race, actually. And before we get to the dirty driving of this particular race, there's one thing I wanted to just point out to, like, flex and brag here because I pulled off a pretty brilliant move here, so... We're coming up to this corner. He's on the end side of this corner. And I predicted that he's going to overshoot it. So I braked a little bit more early. Just got that inside. And we crisscross each other like we're making a letter X on the track. And that's called a switch back line technique. And it worked pretty well on him. And whenever you get to pull that off successfully, it's just a very satisfying feeling. It felt pretty awesome. So I just wanted to get that bragging out of the way real quick. Because that was a pretty good move in the race. And, um... Those are the first two laps up to this point. He hasn't done anything dirty, actually. And, you know, I, I at first was nervous seeing his name, and I thought, oh, boy, here we go. But he actually was impressing me with how he wasn't doing anything dirty, and it was all clean for three laps even. But leading up into the fourth lap. So I'm behind uh, Captain Grump up here. And coming up into this same corner here, actually. Captain Grump is going to go on the grass there, which causes him to swerve a little bit, and then he fishtails, and he's really losing traction on that corner. So, you know, look, they say hindsight's always 20-20. So looking back here, I know that it's a little bit of a split blame on this incident here between me and Captain Grump. Now, I will go forth here and admit that the majority of the blame would fall on my part, okay? I should have backed out here and saw that this is a little bit too much of an aggressive lunge to take. It isn't really something too dirty on my part, but let me just show this one more time here. So, watch Captain Crump here. Oh, and uh, one thing I do want to point out is that he's actually using manual, unlike our boy over here, Jump Like Jaw, who is still rocking that automatic transmission from that last race. Can't really... Learn to drive many. Okay. Anyways, so watch Captain Drum, uh, Captain Grum's car goes on the grass there, causes him to just swerve, overcorrect, and because he overcorrected, he loses traction here. Now, I personally think, yeah, some of the blame can go towards Captain Grump there because when he saw that he lost traction, he was going really slow through this corner. He should have understood that his speed is not going to match now as everyone else when they had a much more ideal entrance into that corner. And so he should have backed out of the inside and gave the inside to people that are going much faster. If you are aware that you're going a lot slower, you're supposed to um, treat it almost like a blue flag situation and let the people that are driving a lot faster take the more ideal line. So I don't really know why he just aggressively moved right back towards the inside, given the fact that he knows that I'm, you know, flying right up towards the inside then. But, um, I mean, I'll just watch it one more time just to get a little bit more analysis on that incident. So you can see there, 
he's not in the inside. He's going a lot slower than me. He goes back into the inside. Now, again, this is a split blame. It's just something that happened. Um, maybe I'm a little bit more to blame. Some of you might argue he's more to blame. I'm thinking maybe I'm a little bit more to blame, but it's just, it's just kind of like nothing major really happened. I just slightly bumped him. And that slight bump I did on him, just like last race, Jump like jaw here, saw that I slightly bumped him, and so we're gonna go inside his car now and see. He's coming up to me over here, and in fact, let's show from my perspective here, so I'm getting uh, ahead of myself. We're gonna go back a little bit, and so jump like jaw there. Saw what happened there, saw that I barely bumped the other guy. Now he sees that he's, you know, avenging him and that he's the server of justice here and so he tries again to shove my car off the track just like last rat uh, last race so he just shoved my car off the track there and so now fast forwarding i was not having that at all and i i noticed that jump like jaw shoved my car off the track two races in a row now so i'm like you know what you really like shoving my car off the track huh well i'm gonna do this the same thing to you that you did twice to me now so i just shoved him off there now he's done, he tried to do this to me the last race I just showed you, and he successfully shoved me off the track this race over something that did not even involve him. And so the fact that I just shoved him off now to get revenge off of two two times that he shoved me off, watch what he does here. His car in the black there, way in the back of the pack. Yeah, he's gonna cut the whole corner just to line it up and just slam me off the whole track, and then he just leaves after that. So we can see this from his perspective now. So he's just losing control, can't get it together, goes over the whole track. And now, you know, this was not really, I don't know how he can see this as a way to like, you know, quote unquote, even the score. Because I was the one that, I didn't even even the score. The score after I hit him off the track was one to two, with one point, I guess you could say, being towards me and two towards him. So then the score at the very end of after he slams me off the track there is one to three. Like, you've had three instances against me now. Like, where do you think this is evening out the score? But, I mean, I guess he just can't accept that I can retaliate against what he's done to me twice and do it to him one time. See, I'm never quick to seek revenge like that, but you guys here just witnessed one time where I've had enough of someone and I do, you know, give it right back to him. Because I don't even know what happened. We were having such a clean race here until... He just, I, I, I'm, my theory here is that he saw me just barely nudge Captain Grump the same way that I barely nudged him that other race. Because it's the same thing that pissed him off when I did it to him. I barely nudged someone going way slower than me through a corner to make it through. I mean, that happens in racing so often. So often. But he saw that happen to somebody else, I guess, and got so angry that he tried to shove me off the track like he saw earlier in this video. Well, he didn't try to. He did. He shoved me off the track. And he kept pushing and kept pushing until I was completely off the track through that whole corner. So, I mean, there's no doubt that that was intentional. Um, I mean, I don't know. I just feel like it was absolutely justified for me at this point to shove him off the track after he's done it twice to me. But, you know, that I've talked about my thoughts enough. You guys have enough good understanding of what happened in that race. So, and I mean, there we go, guys. Two races. I don't think I've had another episode of Dirty Driving where I've had two races in a row. Uh, yeah, and this was consecutively. It was in a row with this guy. So, yeah, I'm definitely exposing the actions of this guy, Jump Like Jaw. If you're in a lobby with this guy, the only heads up I want to give you, the little alert that I want to say is just be aware that this guy has a temper issue, it seems like. So, if you barely bump him, or even if you barely bump somebody else in a race... He will try to retaliate against you, and, you know, you throw a pebble at him, he throws a boulder back at you. So he'll see you barely bump him or somebody else, and he thinks, oh, you want to do that? I'll do this to you, and then he'll just slam you off the whole track. So just be ready for that, and just know that if you're in a lobby with this guy, the chances are very high that he's going to have a temper issue and try to ruin your race. So he ended up leaving after this. You can see that he just left the whole race. So his only goal was just to ruin my race, really. He didn't re really care about the race for him at that point. So, yeah. Jump like jaw. Very dirty driver. Has temper issues. Um, you know, what can I say? I've exposed enough about him already. So I'm going to go ahead and close the video. That's it for the video, guys. If you're new to the channel, please make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I would really appreciate if you clicked like. 
race fast, race clean, and I will see you guys all in the next video.